everybody, Eric Ani here from MechanicalHub.com, owner of Ani Plumbing. I'm going to go uh, in depth in this video on what I had to do to kind of make this whole uh, boiler swap out work for an old system, uh, something a little less conventional, and uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope the information in this video is helpful to anybody that works on boiler heating systems and just kind of give you an idea of a few little tricks that I know of that work for me and I hope they're going to work well for this so stay tuned this is a little bit longer video but I hope you enjoy it okay so removed the 20 year old Wiesman boiler this morning at about 9 a.m I started the demo it is now uh, 5 p.m and we've got the heat on okay there you go pretty cool right this is a combi boiler we're all connected, ready to go, registered, warranty, yay. Uh, new fill valve. And uh, I want to go over a couple things. So this house has thermostatic radiator valves in, mounted on panel radiators. And I'm using this thermostat here as my control for the boiler. There's an outdoor, re or an outdoor sensor connected to the boiler. That's standard issue. That outdoor sensor acts like a thermostat basically uh tells the boiler what temperature it is outside at all times so there you go 28 degrees fahrenheit there's the date time right i need the boiler to know what temperature it is outside so it can calculate and deliver the proper water temperature based off of how i've programmed this and i need this thermostat to keep the boiler on 24 hours 24 hours in a day just constantly during the heating season, okay? I had to add a circulator to the system, um, to the existing piping, because the old boiler is piped direct. This one isn't gonna like that, so we've decoupled it through just uh, primary secondary piping. We're keeping the boiler on. I've got that thermostat set to 90 degrees, okay? So it's basically always gonna tell the boiler it needs heat and that's perfect and I'll show you why. So this piping is the supply and return piping, those two copper pipes. They're connected to that set of manifolds there. That's oxygen barrier PEX, okay? So those that's what we call home run piping. So there's a supply and return and there's a start and a, and to each loop of tubing, right? That's half inch PEX run to panel radiators. A loop goes to a radiator, there's one there. Another loop goes to that radiator because there's a couple pipes connected to the bottom of them. Okay. Oh, just grab my hat. And we're circulating warm water from the boiler through these radiators. They use convection, okay, so the cold air is drawn to them. The warm air and the energy uh, from the warm air is transferred to anything colder in the space. Okay. These are essentially, these are the thermostatic radiator valves. Essentially, this is a thermostat kind of for this whole space right here. Okay. Depending on where you set that valve, that dictates how much heat that puts out. As long as we're always circulating warm water to it. So the boiler is able to Calculate the water temperature needed at any given time based off of heat load, based off of how cold it is outside, and deliver what's needed. And see, this one's set at one, okay? Much cooler than the one over there that was set at four. And then in the, throughout the house, there's panel, there's radiators everywhere in each of the each of the rooms, okay? And you can set the room temperature based off of where you position that dial. Okay, isn't that cool? Well, it is really cool, it's great actually, it's fantastic, people love systems like this. They're very common all over the world, they're just not super common here in the United States. But that's kind of the explanation of what's going on here. We've got a combi boiler, so this'll go out of heating mode immediately if we just turn on hot water. So we can do that right here. Okay. Now, the boiler is going to recognize that. And we've got DHW kicking out heat. That temperature, you can see the burner modulation ramp up. 
water temperature going way up, it's because it's kicking out DHW or domestic hot water. Okay, pretty cool. You can turn that off. It's not heating the house right now. It's only heating the domestic hot water. Turn that off. And it's gonna go right back to where it was. And that water temperature is gonna start dropping. The burner modulation is going to drop and it's gonna get back to its set point water temperature for the heating system. Now, this back to this thermostat. The homeowner is going to have to turn it off, okay? One in the springtime. Once summer comes around, we don't need that thing to be uh, supplying heat to the house. They could just come down here real quick, hit menu, change the mode to off. That pump will turn off. The boiler heating cycle will cease to exist and it'll just provide domestic hot water. So there you go. You want to see something kind of cool? <laughs> Look at this little thing. See that? It's got push buttons on it. Got a little sink on top of the toilet. There you go. That faucet refills the tank when you flush it. <laughs> so cool. But anyway, I hope that was helpful. Uh, kind of an explanation of constant circulation hydronic heating using panel radiators. And I had to manipulate the boiler into thinking there was a call for heat. Otherwise, it won't operate because the house has no thermostats, no electronic thermostats, no mercury thermostats. Uh, and then they just don't give me the capability of doing that with these new Wiesman models anymore. We could do it with the old ones. Um, this is a Vita Dens B1KE120, so 120,000 BTUs. Hopefully you found that useful. Thank you, and have a good day.